Magnets come in all shapes and sizes. They can be made in different ways and used for different things. This sticks stuff to your fridge. This makes breakfast. And this helps scientists discover new things about materials and about physics itself by revealing subatomic phenomena. You might not think of a toaster as a magnet, but anywhere you have a moving charge, you have a magnet, even in a toaster. That's because moving electrons create a magnetic field. You can prove this yourself by making your own electromagnet. Electrons actually move from negative to positive, but since the convention is to think of electricity as going from positive to negative, that's how we've shown it here. To make your magnet stronger, increase the number of loops in the coil. It's a simple equation. The more current, the stronger the magnetic field it creates. But there's a lot more you can do with electromagnets than just pick up paper clips. Powerful research magnets give scientists a way to peer inside everything, from petroleum, to semiconductors, to the brain, and to see what's going on at the atomic level. At the MagLab, we take the idea of a simple electromagnet and scale it way up. Instead of copper wires, we use copper and silver discs and stack them in a coil. We also build magnets from a special material called a superconductor. But that's a story for another time. Then, we pump lots of electricity through it. About 29,000 times more than your toaster uses. That translates into 41 Teslas, which is how we measure magnetic fields. Now let's put something inside the magnet and do an experiment. Here's a material called graphene, which is basically a one atom thick layer of carbon that has some really interesting properties. Physicists want to know more about how it behaves to find out if it could be useful for building faster computers or other applications. To get it inside the magnet, they attach it to a long stick called a probe. Scientists measure all kinds of things using magnets. In this experiment, they are watching what happens to electricity in graphene when it's in a strong magnetic field and when it's very cold. For example, when they lowered the temperature, the electrons encountered less resistance. When they turned on the magnet, the field exerted a force on the electrons that affected their path. Two of the phenomena they observed, called magnetoresistance and the Hall effect, help physicists understand graphene's properties. Signals about what happened in the sample travel back to the scientists, who analyze the data and figure out what it means. Then they share their discovery with scientists everywhere, helping to build knowledge about our remarkable world. Not bad for an amp-top toaster.